So, yep. Thank you for showing up today. Uh, we're just beginning our conversation. Um, anytime it's about startup grind, it's all about learning. It's all about, about uplifting. It's all about delving deeper into entrepreneurship and supporting each other. Uh, today, I'm really impressed and very happy to have um, our panel members here with us. Uh, you know, some of them on short notice, but they've been able to make it. And thank you all also for logging in um, and for joining us to, on today's uh, conversation. Basically, what happens is there's just too many things happening in China these days, right? Just like uh, uh, competitions, there's a lot of government policies, a lot of information, um, and our responsibility as startup grind is to organize events and help us digest these issues one after the other. So thank you so much for showing up today. Uh, without wasting any further time, I'll just go straight and talk about what Startup Grind is and what we stand for, okay? And then we go straight into the conversation uh, with the panel. So those of you who do not know, uh, Startup Grind is the world's largest community of startups and founders and innovators and creators that you would ever come across. Uh, we're proud of the fact that we've been able to go to every corner of this world. And our mission is to bring together startups, founders, innovators, and creators all together in a simplified community backed by the right technologies for them to learn from each other. Now, um, I think that this data, is, this might be a bit out of, out of date, but we're pretty much about 3.5 million entrepreneurs. Uh, we're in over 600 chapters the last time I checked and in over 125 countries. It's pretty impressive with our um, um, headquarters based in the Silicon Valley. We're guided by some interesting values. Our values are just easy, simple to go by. And these are very essential for every community to thrive. One, you give first. You don't just come in to grab for yourself, right? That's how the community goes. You give first, support each other, give information, help. Then you make friends, not contact. Don't commoditize people. We don't encourage that. Be genuine with your friendships and connect genuinely. Um, and I'm sure that you would enjoy it. And then help others before you help yourself. And these are the values that guide the startup guide. We've organized a lot of very interesting um, global events um, over the past years, uh, which were kind of patronized by top speakers uh, from all parts um, of Silicon Valley and also different kinds of industries. I will not mention all their names, but you can see the names on, on the screen. Also attended by very interesting industry leaders. I think you can see some of the Chinese brands there. We have Inoway, Plug and Play, uh, Google for Entrepreneurs, we have the likes of VW and the auto companies as well um, joining in some of our, our events. In China, our presence here is quite massive. Uh, we are currently in over, uh, I mean, uh, 24 active chapters, all the way from Harbin to Kumin um, down south. Uh, so wherever you find yourself, if you're not too sure if Startup Grind exists there, please contact us. We'll connect you to the directors, we'll connect you to uh, whoever will place the chapter and make sure that you're also playing your part as a member of the community. Don't be left out. Uh, you know, the days of being a lone wolf is gone, right? This time around, entrepreneurs come together, bring their ideas together, support each other and go together. Um, so, yep, don't forget to do that. Now, our, um, our main objective, like I said before, is to make sure that we bring you all the events, startup pitches, uh, you know, funding opportunities, and in general support for our members. Now for changing um, this, this, this kind of structure operates in all chapters across China. Every chapter has a city director, a deputy director or a co-director and some mentors and then volunteers. Uh, and in changing, we are uh, myself, I'm the director and then Joanna who is helping you out um, into joining the room is my co-director. And then we have Michael Hutt, who is our mentor. Michael is the, um, uh, what do you call it? The president of the American Chamber of Commerce here locally. And so he's helping us with some of the, the process. And then we have a lot of volunteers. Please, if you can, uh, wherever city you find yourself, try and be part of the volunteering team. If you want to contribute, there's so much you can do 
from marketing to community engagement uh, to anything, event organizing, which is very important uh, to help you also pay a little bit of tribute to the community. So you don't forget to do that. Our partners, uh, the Executive Center. Uh, I think that Tianjin is one of the youngest South Grand community uh, chapters uh, in China. Uh, when we started about a year ago, the Executive Center opened their doors to us. So we don't have to spend so much uh, on finding venues for our members to come in and learn. Wherever you find yourself, whether you are in Shenzhen, uh, Guangzhou or Tianjin or Shanghai, look for the executive. They provide a uh, comprehensive service of uh, office spaces and um, executive suite services. And then you can go there and, 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 and enjoy their support as well. Most importantly, we also have uh, Founders Lair with us. Founders Lair, um, it's, it's been an organization that is making our work easier in China here. Now, what do they do? The ecosystem in China is very complicated and everything is torn apart into little pieces and bits and pieces and it's difficult to find all the information at one place. Now, so the founders layer basically bring all these resources onto one platform with the help of AI, enhance the transparency of the service providers in our ecosystem so we all can benefit from transparency. Um, and then we have Oriental Career, which is basically, and also Startup Castle, which provides uh, incubation services for companies in changing, um, and we're most grateful for their support. Now, uh, if you're not yet in the group, uh, kindly scan the QR code and join in there. Um, my, my email address is always there. If you want to get in touch with us, if you want to figure out what to do with Startup Guide or you want any partnership, please feel free. Um, and, and, and link up with me. I'm more than happy to, to help. Right, so without any further delay, um, I would go straight into the conversation for the day. I'm not going, I'm, the, I'm not the moderator for today's event, uh, but uh, Marian is. Uh, basically, as we've said before, most of the times, um, the first 15 or the next 15 batch of cities that have become first tier cities in China, uh, you know, poses or offer a lot of opportunities to entrepreneurs. And these cities equally have very good, um, you know, ecosystem, well developed. Today's conversation is going to be about these cities. And we have split the cities into three main parts. The Jing, Jing Ji, which is the upper part of China, so the northern part of China, which is made of Beijing, Tianjin, and Hebei, all right? This is the, one of the largest metropolis up north. And then we have the Pearl River Delta area, which is made of uh, Ryan and Co from that area, which is pretty much the southern part. And then we also have the Shanghai part, which is made of Hangzhou, uh, Suzhou, and Nanjing, and all that. So without further delay, I would like to invite Marin um, to take off from here and moderate the event as we go on. So who is Marin? Marin is the founder of We Hustle. He's been in the ecosystem for quite some time now. Um, you know, he's been working with a lot of international organizations to build a diverse ecosystem. He's the founder of We Hustle, and also he's the one who always organized the Tech of Conference. Um, if you guys have heard of it before. And so without any further delay, Marin, I'd like to hand over the panel to you so you take us through today's event. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Anthony. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Great introduction. And I'm so happy to be with the great panelists today as well. Um, just maybe a quick more words about myself. Yes, I've been here for quite some time. It's been already 10 years in China. It's gonna be in December, 10 years. Uh, eight years I spent in Shanghai, a couple of years I live uh, in Shizhuang, close to Beijing, probably you heard about that city. Um, this is the capital of Hebei province. And um, I've been running We Hustle, which is a platform for entrepreneurs and also organizing, as you said, events from yeah, you know. 2019. Um, and the topic that uh, we are talking about today is extremely important and extremely interesting because I think everyone knows about Beijing, everyone knows about Shanghai, about Shenzhen, Guangzhou. Those cities are big. Um, they have very well-developed startup ecosystems. So it's kind of um, easy to find the resources that you need. But then, um, but if you are a smaller startup, then probably it's getting a little bit more complicated for you because nobody, to be honest, just care about you, right? So that's why when we talk about the 
um, cities, which is the first tier cities, new first tier cities, we might have uh, more opportunities over there. And as you mentioned a little bit about the uh, three big areas, right? I'll just also want to go through quickly. So the, the big one, which is Greater Bay Area, um, it's uh, south to um, China, includes uh, more than 10 cities, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, um, Dongguan, right? And then you have Delta uh, Yangtze River area, which is where Shanghai, Nanjing, Suzhou, Hangzhou, and there are more than 20 cities, I believe in. And then the third one, which is Jin, 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 um, including Beijing, Jin, Jin, right? So this area is also kind of big in developing. So, and uh, uh, recently uh, the government announced 15 new tier one cities, right? And that's exactly what we're going to talk about. So um, I would love to start with the first one is actually introducing our speakers, right? So I think uh, speakers will do it way better than I do. So if, um, if you guys are ready and if you can go with a couple of minutes introduction, what do you do? Um, which city are you based in and which area are you going to represent? Probably we'll start with uh, Alan. Hey. Thanks, Marian. Hey, thank you, Anthony and Joanna, for the invitation to uh, join the Tianjin uh, Startup Grind. I've been doing uh, so many of these uh, Startup Grind events, and then finally we got to Tianjin. Uh, my name is Alan Cho. I run a early stage uh, global tech fund of funds that uh, focuses on uh, emerging tech uh, in Europe. And the idea is to, uh, you know, invest early and then bring them to China to uh, uh, develop and, and, and prosper. Uh, and then exit, obviously. Um, but my other uh, role uh, is I'm with the uh, Association of Tech Incubation in China, uh, which is based out of uh, Beijing under the Ministry of Science and Technology. I'm a director in terms of overseas affairs. Uh, and, and part of that job is to look at uh, how we can improve the uh, entrepreneurship, innovation, uh, environment, ecosystem in China. But but obviously taking note from all, all across the world. So I'm going to be uh, covering Tianjin because uh, one is it's a great city. And uh, two, I, I have some uh, background with Tianjin and having uh, taught at Nankai University many years ago as uh, in, in terms of brand marketing, uh, but, but travel quite a bit because I had clients in, uh, in Tianjin and uh, the Tianjin economic development zone. So uh, yeah, so I uh, would be... Uh, uh, good and, and looking forward to deep diving into Tianjin. Thank you, Alan. Brian? Yeah, great. Uh, well, yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Anthony, for inviting me to come speak. Uh, I'm Brian Hirsch. I'm from Shenzhen. Well, I'm from America, but I'm here in Shenzhen. So, of course, I'm going to be covering the Greater Bay Area. So, you know, Shenzhen, Hong Kong, Macau, Guangzhou, uh, all of these new cities like uh, Dongguan, which is the new city on the Tier 1 list. And I have a startup here that focuses on hotel technology. So we help hotels increase revenue from guests through a cross-platform guest experience management system. Uh, so I've been in Shenzhen for over four years now. Uh, Shenzhen was actually the first city I came to in China. Um, well, living here for four years and then another year of business trips back and forth before that. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to share a little bit about what's going on in the greater Bay Area, how all these different cities are working together and how you can leverage the different strengths of different cities to, uh, to have more su uh, success in your startup. Thanks. Thank you, Brian and Fabian. Hey. All right, perfect. So um, yes, my name is Fabian. I'm very happy to see you all as opportunity seekers, um, if it's for yourself or for a company or friends company. So I want to give you today some insight for the YID. Uh, I'm in the Yangtze River Delta region. I'm located in Hangzhou. And uh, yes, I love all the other regions that were mentioned uh, by Brian and Alan. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm located here, here in Hangzhou and I deal all around the, the Wuxi's, the Kunshan's, the Taichang, so all around the YRD region. Um, my path came, basically I was born in, in Germany, in Frankfurt, and uh, worked in investment banking for a few years and then went on to China. Had a bit of um, landing experience, landing of international companies, worked in a local venture capital. And here in Hangzhou, I'm part of, um, yes, Startup Grind Hangzhou. And uh, Anthony mentioned our values. So we are trying to be agnostic matchmakers. Um, we, are, we are very passion driven. Uh, so this is, although just a 
private project, so to say. And um, on the job, I'm uh, working as a portfolio manager for eight hours ahead. We are landing series A and B companies from Germany, from the UK, and um, they obviously have the capacity to expand in China. And we are um, supporting them primarily here in the Yangtze River Delta region. And um, yes, we are a comprehensive team with industry know-how in ag tech, medical technologies, clean technologies. And uh, yes, this is a little bit about my background. I'm very happy to give you some insight today. Thank you, Fabian. So um, just a quick summary, right? So Brian representing the Greater Bay Area. Uh, so if you have guys questions, uh, you can just drop in the chat and we'll have the time to answer them um, uh, after we have the, the panel. So Fabian representing the Yangtze Delta um, area, which is Shanghai, Nanjing, um, right? And then we have Alan who is representing the um, teens in particularly teens. and uh, that, that area, okay? So the first question would be, Alan, coming back to you, um, if you talk about the startup ecosystem right, in this area, particularly in Tianjin, so what is the market size? What are the big uh, industries that are booming? And if startups in this particular industry, they definitely need to choose Tianjin. So if you can uh, outline that, that would be great. Thank you. Well, I mean, the, the reason why there is a slate of 15 uh, new first tier cities is because um, one is that originally, you know, there are only four, uh, like Beijing, Shanghai, Guang, uh, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen. And um, this is to kind of give some notoriety to these up and coming cities that are growing. The, um, the, the sort of the areas that uh, the government looked at when they uh, designated these cities was to look at how well they're developing economically, how uh, they're connected uh, in terms of transportation, uh, how uh, consumers uh, within these cities are are um, are uh, sort of developing <clears throat> in in terms of uh, uh, a large city, and they're 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 uh, then the last one was uh, the future, right? Of how these cities they they uh, you know they feel that these cities will will prosper, and so therefore they picked out all the cities uh, to camp in the north. Uh, actually, Tianjin is the uh, the one that you know obviously you know, that stands out because uh, in, in, in terms of uh, um, the market size, I mean, uh, it's number 10 on the ranking of GDP uh, for uh, all the cities uh, in, in China. So meaning that it is, you know, quite doing quite well uh, post pandemic uh, in terms of development, the, the, uh, the GDP growth is pegged at 6.5%, uh, uh, well, in, in the first half of, uh, of this year. So, um, you know, doing okay, I would say, right? If you're growing at that, at that rate. Um, the, the one thing I, I want to dive into in terms of looking at these cities is um, we always look at, uh, you know, where do, where do they come, you know, uh, where, where do they come from? I mean, where, where did they suddenly, you know, the tension just pop up? No, I mean, tension's always been uh, the... Uh, the front door to China, right? 1860, when they first opened up Tianjin, all the foreign uh, technology flew in, you know, came in, you know, the railroads, uh, telegraph, and, and um, uh, you know, you named the, obviously, uh, shipping, uh, all of them came in. And I think that that is still the role for Tianjin, in, in the sense that it is the largest port in the northern part of China. Uh, I think the, it imports actually in terms of uh, uh, the amount of uh, goods that it, it processes, it's uh, the most, right? It's, it's uh, outpacing uh, even uh, Qingdao. Qingdao is, uh, is outpacing Tianjin in terms of container uh, traffic, but uh, overall uh, goods uh, in terms of global trade is um, uh, coming through Tianjin. So, so that, that is a very significant uh, positioning. Now, uh, if we were going to look at the industries, uh, uh, both uh, state-owned enterprises and private enterprises, I think that it's still very much heavily uh, reliant on uh, the infrastructure. So if you look at state-owned enterprises, it'll be the waterworks, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the transportation corridor, uh, and then you'll see a lot of investment, obviously banking. Um, and, but on the private side, you see a lot of steel making still, and which is what Tianjin is trying to move out, 
right? How do you convert, uh, you, you know, and, and I think one of the things that, uh, you know, we read all the time is that, oh, uh, Beijing uh, being uh, part of Jingjingji, uh, Tianjin is taking up the, uh, or the rest of the city in, in the, in the uh, special zone is taking up that, that uh, uh, work of developing heavy industry. Uh, what Tianjin is trying to get rid of. So where it's going is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, biotech, life sciences. So uh, out of the five universities that Tianjin uh, has that is on the map in terms of uh, uh, you know, the best school in, in, uh, in, uh, in China, including Nankai University, Tianjin University, well, uh, two out of five are, are medical schools. So you have to have talents. And, and I think that uh, that is where I think they're riding this, uh, uh, this direction of wanting to develop biotech. And um, the other area is obviously shipping, right? Logistics, uh, you know, which is, uh, uh, you know, its core competency, right? Having a big poor e-commerce, uh, global commerce, uh, uh, you know, straining the, the technology to streamline, make uh, shipping, uh, logistics much more efficient and cheaper. I think that some those are some of the things that that Tianjin is going to be very good at. We have a we have an ecosystem. Um, uh, smart cities. Every city in China is developing smart cities, so Tianjin is no uh, different, and they will be competitive in that sense. So if you are uh, uh, a, uh, uh, a smart cities, intelligent cities, IoT company, big data, then you'll, you'll find some work in, uh, in uh, Tianjin. Um, and lastly, I think that what, what we're uh, seeing is you, you still have um, uh, a good, good chunk of work done in, in terms of mobility because Tianjin does have uh, a uh, very significant automobile presence for a long time. I remember landing in Beijing uh, 20 years ago, and and the the uh, the, the taxis were Tianjin Shali, right? So um, I think there's a lot to play with. I don't think that there is, uh, you know, except for the shipping logistics, that there's something that that Tianjin can claim for its own. Even though over the years it's been uh, developing through uh, TIDA, through some of the uh, uh, you know special trade zones that it's been uh, pushing, but it, it that's why I think for foreign entrepreneurs a great time right to come in to 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 work with locals to come up with those great innovative ideas to uh, push tending to uh, a higher level. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Right. So if just quick summary. So from basically from steel and shipping to biotech, right? And, and then smart city. So uh, Tianjin is changing and getting a bit more high tech and deep tech. That's great to hear. Thank you, Alan. So let's move to the Greater Bay Area. Um, Brian, so what are the main industries are in Greater Bay Area and how big is the market over there? Yeah. So of course, you know, the Greater Bay Area, the first thing that you think of is hardware. So you know, the cost and timeline for prototyping new devices is the shortest and least expensive in the entire world. So that's why people come from, you know, not just within China, but also globally, people come to the Greater Bay Area to start making hardware devices. Um, now, what you see in Shenzhen is, or in the Greater Bay Area as a whole is that different uh, cities will focus on different parts of tech. Um, so actually, you know, Dongguan, which is a new tier one city, um, has a lot of manufacturing moved over there. Um, what's happened is that the, you know, certain manufacturing used to be within Shenzhen and then it kind of moved a little bit outside. So now it's taking up more areas in, in Dongguan and some of these other, uh, other cities that are kind of in between Shenzhen and Guangzhou. Uh, I think in terms of the characteristics, you know, the, the Greater Bay Area is a, a massive market. Um, it's over one and a half, I think it's 1.6 billion uh, US annually. So it's a very large market and a very large opportunity. Um, outside of hardware, uh, there is, of course, uh, finance. You know, we've got Hong Kong here, which is a very strong financial center. Um, also kind of the connection between uh, China and the rest of the world, at least for finance. So that's another area of, uh, of opportunity here. And then outside of that, you know, there's also a lot of modern logistics, you know, uh, outside of the Greater Bay areas, um, you know, Massive, massive shipment. It's uh, one of the actually earliest ports opened up to international trade in China. 
so it was one of these uh, traditional export hubs and import hubs. So it still is, and that's where uh, lots of products leave to be shipped to go abroad, especially technology products. Um, you know, outside of that, kind of like Tianjin, there are, are some movements towards other areas of technology, some biotech, um, yeah, some smart cities as, as well. Um, but I think that the, the focus is still mainly on hardware in this area. Um, in terms of the you know, characteristics of the Greater Bay Area, probably the most important dynamic is the you know, growing closeness between the different cities of the Greater Bay Area. Bay Area. Yeah. Greater Bay Area. There we go. Um, you know, so, of course, you know, we have, have Hong Kong and Macau that have a, a special autonomous uh, status. And so a lot of the, um, you know, a lot of the development in the next, you know, 15, 20 years is going to be how do we, you know, combine these different cities together to leverage all their different uh, talents and, and advantages. So, you know, you have kind of the, uh, Zhuhai has, has more universities, Hong Kong has more universities. So Hong Kong is strong universities, Guangzhou has some good universities, um, whereas, you know, Shenzhen lacks that, but Shenzhen has really great uh, hardware and is a more modern city than the others as well. Um, so I think, you know, what we're looking at for the next few years is how can these cities work together um, and combine, because, you know, the, the sum is going to be greater than the, the, the union is going to be greater than the sum of the parts, right? Uh, so that's what we're most excited about. Thank you, Brian. Again, quick summary. So if you talk about the Greater Bay Area, we are talking about the hardware, we are talking about the manufacturing, right? We're talking about the finance. And uh, those are the cities that um, because of the proximity and because of the size, they're actually growing. And pro I've seen already some pictures where you have the Guangzhou, Shenzhen, I think, and Foshan, right? And it's kind of like uh, across the street already different city. So they're already pretty much combined. Thank you, Brian. And uh, let's move uh, to the Yangtze Delta area. And we talk about the industries that are booming over here and why you need to come here because of those industries. Fabian, please. Excellent. Thank you very much, Marion. So um, I'm actually very much um, yeah, in line with, with what Brian said, just projecting this on the YRD a little bit. Um, so that's quite interesting since, uh, well, we also have those amazing cities here in, in the YRD that are highly specialized in parts. Um, however, the connectivity between those uh, cities themselves um, is just processing so far. We have um, actually by far, by far the most amount of um, those new emerging tier one cities here in the YRD cluster. Um, we have Nanjing, Hangzhou, Suzhou, Ningbo, um, all classified as the new tier ones. Um, and they're all, all quite specialized. Uh, for instance, I mean, also this proximity to, to, to Shanghai as the service hub of the region. Um, we have the port Ningbo, the port of the, ex the export port of the region. We have um, Hangzhou, the deep tech center for, for AI companies, bigger AI, AI companies such as Alibaba or Hik Vision. Um, who have um, chosen, chosen this location. Um, however, although everything's quite close, um, I would say all in a 30 minute to one hour range from each other, it's just just connecting through the growth of the cities and um, we, we, we're getting there, we're getting there slowly. Um, for, first, um, yes, I must really mention, I'm located here, here in Hangzhou and um, we, 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 we basically picked this location um, for us and many startups do this as well, since um, deep tech is really valued here in this area. Um, the YRD, um, as um, mentioned also by President Xi, is kind of the designated center of this double circulation um, strategy uh, that he has published, I believe, be believe last year. Um, so the idea is basically to make Hangzhou, Zhejiang, really the center, connect everything, all the resources that are there already. We have the Kunshans, um, the factories of, of the region, so to say, um, and bring it straight, uh, straight to the consumer and double circulate it, right? Um, Hangzhou has amazing, amazing opportunities um, around. We have um, been, been basically, um, we've been described as the number one city for, for talent influx, international talent influx uh, into, into China over the past few years. 
So uh, that's a great validation. Hangzhou, for instance, has been designated as the host for the 2022 Asian Games. And um, yes, needless to say, um, we have quite a few emerging tech companies located here. So this is quite exciting. When I'm talking about um, the industries that are particularly important is, um, of course, the digital economy, digital e-commerce, for instance. Um, I would not say Hangzhou is the perfect place to start your drop shipping business, yes. But um, when we're talking about um, maybe e-commerce, um, enhancing technology, supporting services, we are talking about medical technologies as well. Uh, digitization, this is really, really, really on the, um, on the front end here in Hangzhou where you can find uh, brilliant opportunities. Um, yes, this as a short introduction to, to the YRD and, and Hangzhou. Thank you, Fabian. Yeah, just one more time, YRD means Yanzi River Delta, right? For those who probably just joined and didn't know the abbreviation. So, and as a summary of Thank the you. Yanzi River Delta area is for, if, if you choose the Hangzhou, probably it's deep tech, right? You have Ningbo, the logistics sites, then you have Suzhou is manufacturing. Uh, Hangzhou also is famous for e-commerce because of the Alibaba, right? And then you have some other industries that are also emerging over here. And uh, there are lots of cities, but the proximity is quite um, um, close to each other, which is very convenient to um, go around, right? So you, basically lots of people actually, you know, live in one city and working in another because it's basically 20, 30 minutes right from one city to another one. All right, so, and uh, we are moving to the second, um, the third actually question, which is actually a little bit more um, complicated and requires a little bit more um, points to, to give and to share, right? So we're going to speak about the opportunities for startups in um, these uh, regions, right? And the, what I want you to focus on is on talent acquisition because for the startups to find talents, it's always a challenge. And, uh, you know, cities like Shanghai and Beijing, the salaries are extremely high. And if you're a startup, you probably can't just afford, right? So talent acquisition is very important. The cost of operations, again, First year cities are quite pricey. Um, please speak to the cost of operations in your cities. Then uh, we'll talk about um, ease of licensing, right? Whenever you're trying to get any licenses, probably the procedures in the bigger cities are a little bit more complicated. Um, um, please also speak about the fundraising. How hard is it to fundraise money in, in that city? Um, access to the market, of course, we're talking about the local market. Are there any you know, platforms, uh, companies, incubators, accelerators that are actually helping you to get to the market? Um, let's also touch a little bit about the uh, possibility of uh, corporate innovation. Uh, again, if there are big companies, um, MNCs or local big companies, how hard is it to work with them and how willing are they are to change and to innovate, right? And probably if we still have a little bit of time, we, we touch a little bit on the visa application, right? Because again, if, if you're a foreign startup and you have the company over here, definitely this is the some of the things that you're gonna be facing for sure. All right, so Ellen, we are coming back to you. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, if so, you're a, a yeah, for a startup and you're, you're a startup person, you're coming to uh, Tianjin and you're trying to get your visa. Uh, it, it, it's pretty much the same across China now that you're able to uh, get your uh, one, one or two year visa as long as you can show that, that your uh, business is viable, right? You find an incubator, you, they, they get you a letter of uh, uh, recommendation and you're, uh, you know, they, they look at your business plan and, and you're ready to go. Um, in Tianjin, you're, you know, when we talked about, I, I mentioned trade ease of uh, licensing, you're going to be able to, uh, you know, sort of do uh, import export license, you're going to be able to do in two weeks, right? So that's extremely quick and and that streamlining is i you know i find it across the board anywhere now i mean there's no right it's a mandate right to get more business registered uh i think each day in in china there are like fourteen thousand uh businesses registered on a daily basis you know i think that's increasing uh, uh you know ever so because of the ease of licensing uh, on the local level as you go to the um go to the government uh, uh, sector. And so in terms of just some cost factors, you know, I think talking to Anthony and, and Joanna, I mean, they, they are pegging it at 60% less in terms of cost of 
doing business, right, in Tianjin. Now, it takes 30 minutes by high-speed rail to go from Beijing to Tianjin. Now, uh, just to give you some sense of what that means is that in certain cities, you're not even going to be able to do inner city uh, connect uh, in terms of subway that fast. I mean, you literally can jump on a train in uh, Beijing Nan, Nanzhan, the south uh, terminal, and be in downtown Tianjin in half an hour. Now, they used to take uh, two hour, two and a half hours when I was uh, traveling to Tianjin to do business, right? So immediately you're within the, the uh, capability, possibility of either living in Tianjin and commuting to Beijing or the other way around, right? <laughs> living in Beijing and commuting to Tianjin and, and be able to get into the office in half an hour, maybe 40 minutes if you are downtown uh, uh, Tianjin in the beautiful uh uh, Haihu area and the beautiful river area and be able to uh, do your business faster than maybe getting from Zhongguanchun to Taoyang. Yeah, so that's the that's the impotence of, of what it means in terms of uh, just that convenience and opportunity, uh, opportunity cost, right? Spending less time uh, commuting, more time, uh, uh, you know, doing what you need to do to uh, make things work. So um, it's the fundraising side. I, I think market access, right? Global markets, China accounts for 30% of exports globally uh, in the first quarter of uh, this year. And so we, we are sending a lot of things out. And earlier, I think uh, I saw a comment and I didn't mention that. Well, Tianjin is known for... Uh, uh, it's uh, mobility products, right? So uh, e-bikes and, and bicycles and anything to do with uh, that area of uh, uh, last mile transportation, uh, Tianjin is producing. So, um, you know, so if you were to export your own version of a, a scooter, e-scooter or something, giving, giving uh, Shenzhen a run for its money or, or Dongguan runs for its money there. Uh, that, that you would be able to do in Tianjin and get it onto a, a container and, and how, how it goes, right? So, so the ease of doing something that is product-driven, uh, putting onto ship, uh, you know, in, in no time with a, with a proper license in two weeks. Uh, so I think that that's sort of um, the storyline, right? Uh, having an easier life, less noise is as some people would say in big cities like Shanghai, Beijing, and Shenzhen, getting a little too big and you're kind of getting lost in the, in the shuffle. Well, in Tianjin, you're going to be looked upon as uh, someone who uh, they would appreciate uh, as uh, a partner, right? So talking to government is going to be much easier. Talking to local incubators is going to be much easier. But now um, where I see the, the challenge is going to be the, that, that push to get funding, right? How much funding can you get in Tianjin compared to Beijing? Well, nowhere near, right? Uh, overall, uh, VC funding uh, is down, uh, especially for early stage anyways. But uh, Beijing is still very relevant in that area in terms of uh, entrepreneurship uh, funding, uh, early stage pre c c funding, uh, angel funding. Um, is there a possibility for Tianjin to uh, catch up. Well, you, you are going to get some subsidies if you have a PhD uh, and you will get uh, uh, some assistance uh, from the local Bureau of uh, Human Resources. But um, how about beyond that, right? You, you've got a, a, a seed funding essentially. Uh, what happens when you're growing? Well, what happens when you are looking for more funding to uh, to uh, push out your products? Uh, will will you be able to get uh, a bank loan uh, as a foreigner? Well, more likely not. But in the in these free trade zones, one of the things that is going to happen, especially with the uh, central bank digital currency that's coming up, that there's a potential. Right, especially when these cities are giving the the rights uh, or, or uh, via the Bank of China to to international trade via this uh, digital currency. So that's coming up, right? That is the future. That we that's something we need to keep an eye on. Uh, and I think Tianjin will be in play because of this uh, importance in terms of exports, uh, import exports. Uh, and yeah, so I I would say the opportunity is abound anywhere <laughs> but as a as a 
foreign startup as a founder, what you want to do is one, feel comfortable in that city, right? You would want to feel comfortable in, you know, you landed in Beijing. I'm sure, you know, you're, you're, you're spending a lot of time in the subway. So I'm, I'm sure for some of us, that's pretty comfortable. But most of us, it's not. Um, right. Get out of there. Right. Go to a, a, a city where you're appreciated. Right. And I'd say that with the with the, uh, you know, with the utmost uh, respect in the sense that. Right. It, it, it's a it's a it's a social uh, interaction. It's a social uh, dialogue of finding a location where they feel like what your idea is going to be awesome. Uh, they feel like you, you, they appreciate what you do. Right. And, and that, t- that is sometimes the most important thing, right. It doesn't mean that if you land in Shanghai, that you're going to be appreciated, right. It's a big city. You need to spend a lot of time, but who is appreciating this, right. Are the VCs actually, are you really meeting the VCs that you need to meet or are you just, uh, you know, going to event, events and meeting a lot of people, right? And I think that there needs to be an intentional practice there in terms of what, how we look at these cities and, and what will make it work. Well, travel around, right? Go to Hangzhou, right? Go to uh, Fosan and, and Dongguan. Uh, and um, you might find something very different, you know, in terms of uh, the lifestyle, in terms of the quality of, uh, of uh, living, and in terms of funding, if you do it right, right? There's always, uh, you know, we always say that there's always, uh, 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 you know, a, a, uh, somebody who appreciate us out there. <laughs> if we, but we're never going to find it. We just sit in one location. So, uh, you know, find the time to, uh, uh, you know, go to uh, Tianjin if you're in Beijing uh, next. I'm sure Joanna and uh, Anthony will be more than happy to show you around and, give you some tips, but, but that's what you need. You know, uh, really when you're early on, you haven't decided on which city to settle down. Um, look around. I would never say that, that we would know that, well, big city is going to be attractive because it's got everything, but it's also very expensive. Right. And if you're a startup, you do need to kind of keep an eye on the cash flow. So I would say that that would be the uh, recommendation. Uh, you know, take a look at Tianjin because it's, it's going to be much more affordable. It's a great city, good food and, and great history. So, oh, to Brian, uh, when you said you did uh, uh, hotel, uh, you know, upgrades and, and, and digitalization, right? One of the oldest foreign hotels is in Tianjin called the Astor, 19, uh, 1863. Uh, it's still there. They have a, a beautiful museum on the, on the uh, basement floor where you can see uh, all the uh, luminaries that stay there, uh, including Charlie Chaplin, uh, including the, 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 the Dowager Cixi. But the two uh, people that I thought was incredible that they stay there, and I found out when I went through the museum years ago, was uh, two U.S. presidents. And, and people say, well, you know, presidents come and go. Well, two presidents before the turn of the century, <laughs> last century, the uh, century before last, 1800s, right? 1800. Well, it was Ulysses S. Grant and, and uh, President Hoover, right? Two presidents that, right? Ulysses Grant was a Civil War uh, general, uh, uh, you know, obviously leader of the, the, uh, the Union. And uh, he uh, stayed there for uh, almost like a month uh, when he was in China after his turn as president to uh, help with... Uh, uh, you know, obviously, uh, uh, the affairs of the state as a representative to the president uh, of the United States, and you know, which actually would probably mean more than ever now. Oh, the uh, the latest summit, obviously, uh, between the U.S. and China happened in Tianjin for a reason, right? So the importance of Tianjin is right there. They don't need to, you know, sort of boast too much. But uh, well, I think that the- there's. Uh, Talent, talent pool. Is it easy to hire talent? Are there enough universities? I, they are. They, they're going to Beijing, right? Because it's so close, right? So I said that, right? When you live in Tianjin, you could actually, if you had a house, you can literally jump on the high-speed rail and be in uh, Beijing faster than your uh, uh, co-workers in, inside the city, right? So meaning that uh, the talent pool is there. Uh, some of the best universities I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, top, I mean, literally top-notch, you know, five of the top universities. And then, uh, uh, you know, uh, 30, I think there's like 30 universities there, right? So it's a very uh, well, uh, you know, sort of positioned when it comes to uh, education, 
right? It is uh, because of the amount of time and and history that it's had over the years, right? It, that 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 it's uh, it's it's really competitive, just as uh, uh, Beijing and Shanghai are. Thank you, thank you, Alan. Um, yeah, let, let's move on. Um, I think we, we don't have probably enough time to to cover all the questions. So, uh, Brian, let's uh, go straight to you and talk about the. Uh, um, Customer acquisition probably costs and they're just uh, operational costs and licensing yeah. and, and talent pool and fundraising in Greater Bay Area, particularly. Thank you. Yeah, I think in the Greater Bay Area, it's, it's quite interesting. I'll probably go in maybe the opposite uh, order from from Alan. In, in terms of talent acquisition, um, you know, this is one of the uh, you know if you're looking for a young fresh talent, uh, you know, Shenzhen in the Greater Bay Area does not have the uh, as many prestigious universities as you do, you know, up in uh, Beijing or Shanghai, right? Like these areas have have more, uh, you know, the universities are better there. Um, of course, you know, there's Hong Kong, um, which has good universities. Um, but what you do have is a lot of people that have worked in some of China's best tech companies. You know, of course, for me, when I'm looking for talent, you kind of are standing with a basket, like underneath Tencent, and just like kind of like prodding some engineers out. <laughs> Um, but then, uh, in terms of all of the, uh, kind of, you know, smaller cities around the outside and also the, you know, new tier one city, Dongguan, um, out there, it's quite difficult to find, I mean, it depends on what you're looking for, right? Um, if you are a new startup, then probably it's not the first place you go. Probably start in Shenzhen and do kind of your prototyping here. And then you go to Dongguan when you're ready to manufacture and get the cost down. Um, you know, of course, you know, the cost in Shenzhen is more expensive. But, you know, you ask it more expensive in comparison to what, you know, like I was thinking, do I go to uh, Silicon Valley and start my startup or stay here in Shenzhen and do it, you know, compared to going to, you know, the, the uh, Bay Area over there, it's a lot cheaper, right? You know, one quarter, one fifth the price for an engineer that's like, you know, pretty much just as capable. Uh, yeah, it uh, depends what you're looking at. In terms of ease of licensing, um, yeah, all the cities are a little bit different, but generally uh, quite similar. It's, quite fast and easy to set up a, a company here uh, as a foreigner. Um, you know, it, it's helpful to have a kind of soft landing into the city, like I would imagine it would be in some of the other cities in China as well. Um, especially, you know, people that can help find the right connections to get your company up and running, to set things up, to make sure all of your uh, boxes are checked. Um, the fundraising kind of depends a little bit. So generally in terms of early funding, uh, Shenzhen itself is not as good as uh, Shanghai or Beijing. Um, you'd probably go, especially as a foreign founder, you're definitely going to go to Hong Kong for your initial funding. Hong Kong, maybe Guangzhou, but probably Hong Kong, um, just because there's a larger international community there. There's a lot larger amount of, um, you know, maybe early investors, early angels that are going to join in um, when you're just starting your company. Uh, for you know, I have a lot of friends who are also Chinese founders, and in that case, the scenario is a little bit different. Um, I think that in Shenzhen, a lot of the VCs here are, are um, a little bit newer than maybe in other cities. And so uh, there are maybe more options if you're a local founder, um, just because of the nature of the market and, and what uh, venture capitalists are looking for. Um, for access to the market, yeah, I think it's a great place, um, both because, you know, on one hand, you have kind of coming from the rest of the world into China. Um, you know, you've got Hong yeah. Kong like leading, leading things in, but then also you've got the opposite where, you know, if you are in China trying to go out, um, it's also a great uh, transition. Uh, for, for, I'm getting another voice on here. Um, <laughs> for, for corporate innovation, uh, you know, I think corporate innovation is a little bit difficult no matter where you are. Um, in Shenzhen, it's maybe a little bit easier because it's such a new city. The, the companies that came here, uh, you know, are looking for that. That's why they came to Shenzhen is because they're looking for new tech. If you're in either Guangzhou or Hong Kong, um, it might be, you know, the technology is a little bit slower there. Uh, but, you know, I'm sure there are opportunities as, as well, depending on who you know and what you find. Um, you know, the last thing we talk about is a visa application, uh, very easy. I mean, it seems like you know, every year the rules change slightly, but it's definitely getting better and better over time. So yeah, no, no issues there, very easy to do that. Thank you, Brian, thank you very much. All right, so Fabian, so how about the um, Delta Yonzi River? 
All right. So um, exactly. I just um, basically agree with pretty much what Brian said on terms of the licensing part on the ease of setting up a business or so. But um, these are really not the, the challenges which um, hopefully mature entrepreneurs who are entering um, a high growth market such as the tier 1.5 city uh, who are entering those such a market are really concerned with. Um, but most often they are, of course, the legal parts, the structuring parts are the concern, but they are pretty much standardized all across China with um, some, some regional characteristics and challenges, of course, since it's also new to those emerging cities. But um, at the end of the day, what's really interesting to, to most of you is probably the access to the, to the market. Um, and actually, this is something that you can pretty much research yourself first by basically realizing, is your market here in terms of the industry and the competition? And um, I would argue when you look into Hangzhou, for instance, and you're a medical technology startup or a deep tech company, um, then, then you will find such competitors or potential partners, depending on your own perspective, exactly there. And this also is valid for, for the talent. Um, so talent acquisition regarding this, I must really mention, I mean, Hangzhou was over the past few years, um, really the prime destination for, for returnees. We're talking about highly educated consumers, um, English speakers who very often have also a high net worth. Um, I think Hangzhou is in the top five in terms of high net worth individuals here in China. So if you have a wealthy middle class and you can access that market potentially um, if you take the courage and you do that step and you are not a Shanghainese um, foreigner anymore who is mingling around your little bubble. But in Hangzhou, you really you have to immerse and, and build this semi-Chinese team as well, because when we're talking about emerging tier one, the, the factor that we are just emerging is, yes, we are not um, internationalized yet. We come from a vertical background, for instance, in medical technologies or deep tech, but um, we're not that broad. We have not built that holistic ecosystem yet um, for, for a foreigner to have a comfortable landing experience. But for those high growth scale-ups that have a targeted partnership here, um, the target, uh, like a really precise segment and the strategy, they can really thrive in these in these cities, uh, in these emerging tier one cities, um, because that's why we call them emerging, right? Um, high growth, um, high potential. And um, regarding the, the cost factors, um, yeah, the, the cost in, in Hangzhou is cheaper than, it's more affordable than, than Shanghai, than uh, Beijing in terms of living cost. And you can get some beneficial policies, for instance, um, in, in, in some regions. That's absolutely the case. However, yes, you should never come to any city for, for reasons such as policy. Um, there are good policies if you qualify for them. Yes, and um, same goes for investment and access to the capital markets. I mentioned the, the, the um, returning middle class, the wealthy middle class that's kind of settling in Hangzhou and preferring these places. We, we had this huge increase of um, unicorn number in tech unicorns here in Hangzhou from 2019, just about 26 to 40 in, in, in uh, 2021. So they have this capital market experience now. They collected all this cash and those founders, they are true believers in innovation and uh, starting to become business angels, to become VCs, yeah? But same as government policies, same as a sophisticated market, you have to qualify for it. And that's why um, if you are a deep tech company that, you well, can potentially qualify for these resources, resources come to Hangzhou. But um, if you're really just starting up a business and you're trying to find out, um, then this might be a step, a step too far, uh, too early for you. So this is my um, two, cents, two cents on this. Thank you, Fabian. You, you, you mentioned about the policies and I think it's gonna be the next question that we're going to touch a little bit, right? And you say you, you shouldn't come to the city because of the policies, right? So I just want you to elaborate a little bit more on that when it's your turn. But um, as, as you said about the policies, right? So uh, coming from Shanghai, I mean, based in Shanghai for quite some time, and being as the small startup, it's always a challenge to get something from the government, right? Because um, the government is generous, but when it comes to, to a bigger scale startups, right? Especially in the first tier cities. So that's why what we see is that if you come to the second tier cities or the 
uh, first a new new um, tier one cities, right? So you have a little bit more support from the local government, but probably the challenge is on how to get that support, right? Because there are not much um, good examples happened before. Probably the communication issues, etc., etc., etc. So um, basically, what I want to to touch is. Uh, uh, starting again from uh, Alan, how about the policies and how supportive is the government and uh, how easy to get that support when it comes to changing? Well, to your point that it's definitely going to be much better than than Beijing and Shanghai and, and maybe not Shenzhen for sure, but um, it just, right, I mean, the government look at figures on how things are going in terms of tax uh, revenue and how sectors are developing, and they're going to help uh, when they need to help, right? They're going to uh, uh, sort of give that, uh, you know, be, be free-handed in terms of, uh, uh, of letting you, you know, do your thing. Now, the adage always for me, and I, when I talk to startups around the world, I says, listen, do you want to be a small, small fish in a big pond, or do you want to be a big fish in a small pond? Right, you decide. I mean, that's 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 tactical, right? Meaning that you come to Shanghai, you better be able to swing with the big boys and, and big girls and, and and make things happen. But if you're in a small city, you're gonna they're gonna pay attention to you because you're gonna be the you know very few uh, uh, foreign startups in that city, and it's just coming up. These these the great thing about these uh, the new designation for these first tier city is that. There, I mean, that's the intention. It's trying to move people into uh, small cities, right? So that you're 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 able to distribute that that talent pool and distribute the resources. And I'll bet you, and, and this is uh, you know this is on on video that the the policy in Fosan, in in uh, Tianjin, and uh, maybe well Hanzhou already has some pretty good policies, but in uh, maybe. Uh, Suzhou, uh, you know, maybe Suzhou, because I just went to Suzhou and I think it's coming up, is that will be better than all the major cities that, 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 uh, that you're looking at, right? It's easy to get into a trap to, uh, you know, to stay in a major metropolitan city like Shanghai. Who wouldn't? <laughs> I mean, who would? It's like being in New York, you know, and, and in, in Beijing because of the flow of capital is 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 really uh, quite quite astonishing how much capital if you do it right and you'll be able to meet the uh, the right VC in Beijing. But if you're trying to start a real business that is uh, you know that is that fits a city like uh, like Tianjin, then you should go to Tianjin because uh, one is that the on the policy side, your employee, if they came from outside of Tianjin, will be able to stay. The Huco system in Tianjin is very streamlined and you'll be able to, to keep your employee. And the pay, it, it, you know, in terms of average pay, right? You're looking at someone uh, at the underground level. This I just got the figure from Anthony earlier, right? The average pay is 4,000 RMB <laughs> with a master's degree is 6,000. I mean, that is day and night. And, and, and you know, now, what we need to pay attention to is okay. I'm I'm uh, I'm paying less, but are the uh, are the employees the, the potential employees are they less competent? I think it's up to you, right? As a leader, as the as the leader of the the band and and as the founder, it's up to you to invigorate and run your own company rather than deciding that that the society is going to do that for you. That ain't going to happen, right? So meaning that. Um, uh, that's always the case, right? Yes, you know, they, they, the 996, the 007 in Beijing and Shenzhen and, and elsewhere. But the idea is that, you know, can we do this better, right? That's something that we bring to the table, right, from overseas. That, that, that is there a better way to do this so that, you know, someone wrote earlier, oh, yeah, well, being a, a founder is always a hustle and there is no comfort uh, level. Well, I disagree. I think it's up to you to make that comfort level, right? To make it so that you live well, that you eat well, that you stay healthy. Um, you know, people would always dis you know sort of have a discussion on this. Hey, it's 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 what you make of it, 
right? Don't don't put us everything on the government. <laughs> you know, government is trying to run a city, run a run a brand new first tier city, which is getting a lot of notoriety. So I'm betting that that there will be much more policies in Tianjin than anywhere else, because it's anchoring this Jingjing Ji uh, uh, region uh, development uh, zone, and. Uh, you know, the North is not doing well. If you look at the census, you look at the economic uh, breakdown, uh, Northern China is losing population uh, to the, to, to, uh, to the uh, uh, Yangtze River Delta, to uh, the Greater Bay Area. So there has to be uh, something done. And I think that the, the way that the, the policy will roll down is, is it will help in any way. So all the specific policies of visas, registrations, it's all streamlined. This is just the way things are. Um, uh, and I mentioned the, uh, the policy for IP. Uh, if, you're, if you have employees that are, are inventing IPs and registering those, you'll get subsidies from the government for that in tech zones and, and, and tech parks. And then um, the... Uh, if you hire masters and, and PhD uh, graduates, you're going to get certain subsidies, and they will get certain housing subsidies. So those are pretty across the board because of the national policy of mass entrepreneurship innovation. You know, strong, strong, top, top, twenty one, twenty one. That is the policy, but local government can make very specific, dedicated uh, uh, investment in companies now. Uh, to Marion's point, right? In in if you go to Shanghai, go to Zhangjiang in, in Beijing, go to Zhongguan Sun, yeah, they're gonna take in the big biotech guys. Uh, they give them the uh, uh, the factory uh, manufacturing space and and funding and loans and what have you. Well, there's a lot that goes into that, right? A lot of times, you know, these are returning Chinese, which we who are getting uh, a better, uh, you know, uh, 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 policy. You know, it's not always, you know, it's, it tries to be balanced, but, it, it, you know, sometimes it's, it's too, uh, it's uh, focused on that specific project. So when you talk to a local district in, um, in Tianjin, let's say, and, and you have a great project, tell me, uh, it, it's like selling to an investor, right? You have to tell them exactly what, what your vision is, what you're trying to do, how many jobs are you creating? And, and they will listen. And these are not, uh, these are people that are, uh, are you know, the, the, the local officials are, are, that's their job is to ensure that the economy runs. So I would say uh, just uh, be very, uh, you know, open-minded about uh, smaller cities in China. Uh, you might just be the King Kong in that little city <laughs> or, 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 that, or that big, uh, big whale. Uh, and uh, it just, it's up to you, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a decision that you need to make to, to find a better environment with the right uh, resources, uh, including policy. So when you do need to go to, um, um, you know, take a look at uh, cities like Tianjin, uh, please, you know, look up uh, the, the startup grind uh, guys and their you know, the obviously Anthony and Joanna, but there are others. Now, take a look. I, I enjoy the city. I, if I was, uh, you know, uh, if I was starting something in mobility, I would go there, right? It just makes sense, right? You have the manufacturing, you have uh, uh, the exports, uh, you have the steel. They actually make, make uh, steel out there. So, um, uh, you know, is the ecosystem complete enough? And then talk to the, the, uh, the government and say, listen, I've got a great connect to uh to my home country or to uh eu or or uh well states i'm, I'm kind of thinking maybe not uh, brian <laughs> uh but uh uh we're we're we're, we're waiting and seeing uh being from america uh but but meaning that you really could be the connect right there's a lot of other layers here right for uh for a smaller uh first tier city where um you know you can be the uh, the new uh, 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 chair and uh, founder of the Chamber of Commerce, if you want to, right? I mean, you can be the 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 the, the founder of uh, Startup Grind, EO, and what have you. So anyway, a lot lot of opportunities. I, I think the policies are there. Uh, I think that it, it also is very 
uh, specific to projects, right? If you talk to local uh, districts, you literally can talk your way into having them fund you if you have the right project. And that's, I've, I've uh, done it myself and I've helped people to do that. But it has to be so good, right? You have to tell that story like a great startup uh, founder should. And that's why, uh, you know, we, we uh, encourage you to uh, obviously pitch, pitch when you can, but, but also, you know, obviously try to, try to improve your Chinese so you could do it in Chinese. Thanks. Yeah, that's great uh, advice. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Um, Brian, how, how easy it is to be a Hong Kong in, um, uh, to be a king, king or, or the, the big whale in Greater Bay Area? Ah, yeah. I mean, that's, you know, I think actually a lot of what uh, Alan was saying uh, is also applicable in the Greater Bay Area. You know, it's kind of if you have the right project um, that falls in line with the initiatives that the government is trying to accomplish, then yeah, you know, they're going to open some doors for you and help you out. Um, if you are a uh, small startup, don't spend your time on it. Go find other, you know, the government policies are not uh, where you should be spending your, your time resource. Um, if you're a scale up, then yeah, at that point it can make sense. Um, but I would think uh, probably, you know, for any startup in China, probably the strategy is you know, whatever city you decide to start up in, you know, start there, grow, become to a significant size, I mean, at least like, you know, 50 person team or something like this. And then think about your long-term vision of, of where you want to be, because that's the point where uh, other cities might also want to scout your startup to come to their city. And that's when you're going to get the most resources and favorable policies. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, what do the uh, local governments need to accomplish, right? They need to take care of their people. They need to uh, ensure that their uh, tax revenue is increasing. Um, and so what does that, you know, bringing promising scale-ups to the, that area is, is really helpful. Um, of course, there are some other, uh, you know, programs around yeah, having a certain number of masters or having a certain number of patents or having a certain number of uh, employees or certain revenue. Um, all of these will help you get favorable policies. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily suggest one of the smaller cities in the Greater Bay Area to start. Um, they would be better for, you know, somewhere to move once you already reach a certain scale. Uh, you know, if you're a team of, uh, you know, if you're a startup team of like 10 people, it really doesn't uh, make sense to be in that area uh, for you, um, especially as a foreign, uh, a foreign startup. Now, once you get to be a larger size, then that's where it's more appealing. Um, in terms of what sorts of policies are very typical, um, you know, free rent uh, is quite common. Um, free, uh, you get tax deduction for multiple years. Uh, you know, I know there are some startups that get, you know, pay nothing in tax for the first three years after they move to a new city. Um, so I think those are the most common ones that I see. Um, if you're lucky, you know, sometimes you can get some land. <laughs> there are policies where, you know, if you're creating a new factory, then, uh, you know, sometimes they will just give you that land so that you can create the factory. Um, they might even pay for some construction costs or costs or things like that. Um, so there are there are favorable government policies, but mainly for scale ups or uh, even you know maybe you could say small enterprises, right? Thank you, Brian. And we are moving to Fabian. Fabian, what are the interesting policies uh, in uh, Yangtze River Delta area? Sure, sure, sure. So um, what, what I would love to do is actually to give you a short guideline on how to approach this and then end up at the policies, because I think most people are confused. They're like, policies, policies. You just don't don't grab them, right? They are just not, I mean, they are everywhere, but nowhere really to, 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 to attain. Um, so um, we mentioned uh, before Founders Lair, right, which is a great website to um, basically get an overview about what's going on in the region to hear a little bit about the noise, who makes the noise. So you find people to talk to, um, especially also Startup Grind is very helpful. The directors, they have basically um, signed this agreement, um, at least in their mind, to be agnostic, to give, to um, give you a neutral view of what's going on in an ecosystem. 
And um, I would really say most do so and give you as a startup very often very honest feedback about where they could see you working out also with policies where, where you could fit in. Um, and then also, yeah, potentially even you, Marianne, from WeHustle, you probably also have a great overview about what's going on um, China-wide. And once you've talked to those, um, well, first, um, well, these ecosystem heroes, so to say, then uh, you can really listen yourself in on maybe a district level, level, on a city level, but what's interesting. I mean, at the end of the day, your first thought should be... Hello? Okay, and your, sorry, my, my Siri was talking to me. Um, at first, you should um, really listen. Okay, is your market in Hangzhou? Yes, your market is in Hangzhou because you're a medical technology startup, right? So you look into Hangzhou, then you listen in which district the noise is made. Um, potentially, you get in there via a competition, right? Huge exposure. And then you suddenly have the conversation going to three different local districts or to 10 different agents who are located in seven districts. And you will have this conversation, you will go engaging with them, but also with the startups who have made the experience with them. And then you will see who has attained which policies, in which district are the early stage policies, in which district are the vertical stage policies, uh, vertical focused policies. And um, this is a little bit of the way you get into the topic. Um, and this is truly relevant for well, scale-ups, not for the startups themselves, because I mean, startups themselves, what are they interested in, in some free space? Um, that's abundant, you, you can get that everywhere, right? But choosing a headquarter and going into those real policies that are interested, interesting to you, um, that's of course a different decision, there's a different process behind this, and this can take some time, um, but yes, you, you reap what you sow. Um, so this a little bit as a strategy. What's available in, in Hangzhou, and um, as Alan said, this is also valid for Tianjin probably, and for, for, for the other emerging ones especially, you can, you can find the sweet spot and sweet policies for, uh, from local governments who have already some experience with nurturing uh, local startups or local scale-ups, because again, those are growth cities, right? And then these cities now want to go into international uh, innovation and they bring this experience to the table and then they give you terms such as matched funding because probably you're a foreigner, right? So they want you to also inject some capital. Um, they give you the free space. I think this is kind of like, yeah, as easy done as it's said, yes. Um, and then, well, you're, you're getting there slowly. If you want a lot of free stuff, uh, that's probably not even available in tier 1.5 cities because, or emerging tier one cities, because to be honest, these cities have experience, they have some certain standards, they're also looking for the real deal, the real text generators, and um, that's why, um, yes, they also, also have some, some, some sort of standards here. That for, for really ones who, are, who want some maybe cash grant in advance, in advance and no, no reimbursements, um, maybe they would also be encouraged to look into um, tier two cities, tier three cities, if they are brave enough to do so. Um, to, yeah, that's, that's my frank advice at this, at this point, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Fabian. Uh, we are going to switch to the panel. Um, we open up to, to public very soon, right? Before that, um, I will ask the last question. I think it's kind of also interesting and it might be helpful for, for people as well. So um, the first city, 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 cities like Shanghai, Beijing, right? Uh, Shenzhen, Guangzhou, very developed. So you have actually very developed startup ecosystem. You have lots of communities. You have lots of incubators, accelerators, right? You have lots of events happening. So whenever you have questions or you want to test the idea or you want to share with someone, get the feedback. So you just go to the you know event, uh, sometimes like five events uh, a day. So um, th those things are in abundance and it's helpful especially when you're the starting out and you need a massive input of feedback, right? Um, and connections and building up network. So when it comes to the um, emerging cities, right? So what about the startup ecosystem? And uh, maybe you can just send, you know, um, name some organizations or events that people need to look out or what do you think it might be helpful, right? In the emerging cities? Because I think the ecosystem over there is not that developed yet. Alan, how about changing? Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, incubators are, you know, or at least these innovation spaces are pretty much everywhere, right? So, so your your zhongchang kongjian is going to be pretty much everywhere. But um, 
so getting that that free desk pretty good chance if you're a foreign uh founder and you go to some location you can you can uh, ask him for that and you'll get it right um so but the incubator accelerators in Tianjin, right so i i said earlier the steel industry is quite uh uh, develop and, and and quite a large uh, state-owned enterprise presence there. So Sino Steel has its own um, incubator. So that's the biggest steel uh, manufacturer in in uh, in Tianjin. So so they're already getting into that corporate innovation. Uh, you know, making sure that they uh, get some uh, startups in there. So that that's part of that national policy I talked about earlier, obviously. But the um, incubation or startup castle, which uh, uh, Joanna and Anthony are, are helping out with in uh, in uh, uh, Tianjin, uh, which is you know they they can share with you a little 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 uh, you know uh, a bit away from uh, the city center, but you know it, transportation uh, will will improve as as uh, time goes on. Just that's just the way the, these. Uh, uh, new first tier cities are, are being designed, uh, and Tus Park is there. So once in Science Park is around the, uh, around that area. So you you do have uh, uh, you know pretty much players that you'll see uh, everywhere else. But Tianjin is unique in the sense that it's always been second fiddle to Beijing. That is this problem. Uh, that that proximity. Uh, Jing means the you know the entryway for for uh, for the emperor, right? So that's a, quite a name, uh, and so it's always had a position, but it's always been used as the conduit to uh, sort of connect with the outside world. Well, we're obviously not not at that time of the uh, of uh, globalization, so so Tianjin is uh, trying to find its uh, footing <clears throat> and. Uh, as Beijing moves uh, uh, its uh, steel manufacturing outside of, uh, uh, you know, the capital city, where they go? Went to Tianjin, you know, went to other, other areas. I really think that there is a, you know, you always want to be with the underdog, right? I always fight for the underdog because I think that it's just more fun. You know, if you're going to go with the winner, like uh, how we do secondary markets, I think that's kind of, Okay, fine. <laughs> you know, you want to make some money, jump on. But with the startups, with um, what the potential is for entrepreneurship and, and pushing something new, it, that, I think it's going to happen. Well, it, it is happening with cities where they are, um, you know, they're, they're lining up. Right. So Shenzhen is uh, wasn't a sure thing, but, it, it, you know, it obviously became a sure thing uh, as, as we moved on as uh, entrepreneurship just kind of it, it's a city of entrepreneurship. So there's no doubt about it. Hangzhou without Ali. Yeah. You know, could, could be still a sleeping little town uh, with the West Lake on the West Lake. Uh, but but it, it does have Alibaba. Right. So all these guys that that have made bands from the listings have uh, decided to start their own business. You know, they invest, they, they start new startups, and that's why the, it's vibrant, right? That, that the culture, that, that, that uh, entrepreneurship, um, innovation culture. Uh, Tianjin is lacking in that, in that space. But I think that that's where the opportunity is, which, uh, you know, is the conversation with, uh, the, with the Tianjin directors, is that, but be a guidance to that. I mean, you, you don't. You don't always need to be passive, right? There, there, there needs to be a conversation. That needs to be had. Now, how much, uh, uh, you know, does a foreign startup or, or uh, a group of foreign uh, uh, entrepreneurs? Uh, how far can you get in terms of that conversation? Well, I think it's gonna, it's it's gonna be quite. Uh, 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 you know, quite uh, important now, right? For uh, a city like Tianjin, where it has that 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 international enclave type of uh, uh, history, but something happened because of the big sucking sound of of Beijing, right? You just can't be. Uh, you, how do you outdo Beijing? <laughs> it's just right. There's no way. It's a capital. It's got the best schools, best talents. 
Uh, so that's the problem. So, but now we're elevating these cities that are, um, you know, that have the, the elements that I talked about in terms of economic resources, connectivity, in terms of transportation and, and infrastructure, that, that that's what the government, the Chinese government is doing. It's elevating a whole group of uh, potentially uh, really, you know, high, you know, highly, um, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, high potential uh, uh, municipalities that, that will get the support because I looked at the tax, um, uh, the tax uh, uh, sort of uh, level, the amount of taxes that Tianjin pays and all these other uh, first tier cities, and they all pay a lot of taxes. Uh, right. But one of the things that's interesting is that lots giving back from the central government to these, uh, to these uh, 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 new first tier city, guess where they're going? All those taxes are going, you know, pro proportionally, uh, percentage wise, going to these uh, first tier cities. Whereas if you look at the more developed uh, uh, cities, they're not getting the amount of uh, uh, taxes uh, in terms of support. So that means that when, when their money coming in, just like, uh, uh, the U.S. with with all the uh, uh, all the uh, uh, you know the infrastructural bill and and different ways to invigorate the economy. This is China's way to do it. So if you look at certain data, it just it's obvious that the money is going to be poured into these uh, very uh, new and 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 you know sort of very uh, uh, looked after cities. So. So take that into uh, consideration as we look at uh, these cities beyond uh, the personal, uh, you know, sort of feel, uh, your personal opinions and all that. That's, you know, that's important. But right. we look at numbers, right? So the numbers are there. Thank you, Alan. Um, Brian, um, quickly, right, about the startup ecosystem and how it's easy to start out and, you know, um, pitch your idea, connect to founders, connect to the ecosystem. Yeah, definitely. There are a few groups uh, that would be good to look into. Of course, you know, there's the local sort of grind chapter here. Uh, uh, there's actually one in Shenzhen, there's one in Hong Kong, there's one in Macau. I think Guangzhou also has one. Uh, I remember on the map that uh, Anthony was showing us, there's just like a bunch of little circles right next to each other. So they're all here. Um, those are great. There are also a lot that are around hardware as well. So, you know, hardware masses, if you're starting out here and you're looking to connect to the hardware ecosystem, that's a great resource. Um, outside of that, there are some uh, accelerators that are very popular. So Hack is a great accelerator for hardware um, in uh, here in Shenzhen. And then in Hong Kong, you have Brink, which is also a good accelerator. But um, you know, if you're coming to do hardware, then probably being in Shenzhen is a little bit better there. Um, also, you know, Hong Kong and Macau both have some good really early stage grant um, opportunities that they offer in, in Hong Kong, they offer it through uh, Cyberport and then Hong Kong Science and Technology Park. Uh, so both those places give you about a million Hong Kong dollars of grant money and then, uh, you know, also connect you with local uh, entrepreneurs there as well and mentors and all that good stuff. Um, Macau's program is similar, but I think a little bit more difficult to enter the, there's the requirements are a little bit higher in terms of you know, if you actually need someone from Macau on your team, whereas Hong Kong, you just need to have a Hong Kong registered company. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, those are kind of the basic places to start. Um, outside of that, you know, there are lots of, uh, you know, there's a strong entrepreneurial community um, in the Greater Bay Area. So you can just come and meet people, start to attend um, all sorts of meetup events. And you know, fairly quickly, you can uh, meet the ecosystem here. Thank you, Brian. Fabian. You're the last one. All right. So uh, just a spotlight on some communities that are here strong. Of course, uh, Startup Grind is uh, trying its best to, to keep the YRD um, vivid and active. We have a Suzhou chapter. We have a Nanjing chapter and a Hangzhou chapter, as well as the Shanghai chapter, of course, which is also part of the YRD. <laughs> Let's not forget that. And um, yes, well, so um, other than that, um, you have, if you're a woman, a female founder or have a female founding team, um, ladies who tag uh, she up, who's very active here in Hangzhou or in this region, um, although they're almost all across China, you could say. 
Um, other than that, in terms of um, Hangzhou-based, uh, let's say, innovation enablers, uh, you have on the foreign side, you have Nihap, which is pr quite prominent in the region. Um, I myself right now, I'm uh, working in the Sino-European Technology and Innovation Center here, uh, which is also um, sort of a landing platform, or one of our landing platforms here um, that welcomes foreign startups, but also basically nurtures the exchange among them. Uh, other than that, we have InnoNation. Um, they are based in the, in the district, district in Hangzhou that's a bit southern of the river. They're also quite active um, and nurturing international, international startups and uh, scale-ups. Um, aside of that, yes, there's quite a few that um, I could connect you to quite easily. Also, Startup Grant could connect you to quite easily, so feel free to approach us anytime. Um, regarding Chinese innovation, let's uh, be honest, uh, this, let, I mean, yes, we are trying to make a business in China, right? We have all these um, unicorns that have recently emerged that are setting up tech funds right now. They are trying to go abroad now. This is the new trend of these emerging cities. We're talking about locally grown companies that are now trying to expand and to go international. So they are looking for international talent, international solution providers to bridge that gap, to expand. Um, quickly, right? You also find those in Hangzhou, especially, but they are a little bit difficult to access. For that, you really need to change yourself from the foreign component and to um, make yourself a bit more Chinese to do that courageous step. And it's difficult to do, but you can do it immensely successful and then um, engage with the Alibaba, Huapan, Liangchang uh, Liang in incubators, um, Tuya Smart, which is a recent startup, I'm um, sorry, a unicorn in Hangzhou, they are also um, setting up international IoT funds, right? So if you identify those emerging tech players um, and investors, then uh, surely you can engage with them as well. If you if you um, basically do that a little bit mental shift and you think like a tier 1.5 city and not a Shanghai or um, a Beijing purely international. So just that's that's my statement on this. <laughs> Thank you, Fabian. Thank you very much, everyone. So I think uh, we have just a couple of minutes for, for Q&A right, with the audience. There are so many more questions to cover, but we don't have, unfortunately, time. So this is the time for just a couple of questions. Anthony, if you want to point out questions that have been asked earlier, I think one of the questions that was referred to uh, Brian about the fundraising in Hong Kong, I guess, if you can just quickly um, touch on that, and then probably we'll have another one uh, to round up. Yeah, so for Hong Kong, start off with uh, Cyberport and HKSTP, Hong Kong oh, Science okay. and Technology okay. Park. Um, that's the best for, uh, you know, you'll get some grant money and then on top of that, they'll also check you with the rest of the Hong Kong ecosystem. I mean, Hong Kong itself is a very, uh, it's a fairly small city and the population is not that small, but it's very uh, tight knit in terms of the ecosystem is very close. So if you start meeting some of the people there, you quickly meet everybody else. So I'd start off with those places and then go to um, other uh, accelerators. Um, outside of that, you might look at Brink um, or, oh, what's the name of that other place? Da, 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 da. Yeah, there's another like early accelerator cross investor. There are quite a few, and I think Hong Kong ecosystem a little bit more transparency or a little bit more accessible, right? So there is definitely more information online that can be yep. found. Uh, and um, Alan, one, one question, probably that's gonna be the final one, uh, quick for you. So how would you compare Tianjin business culture versus Beijing, right? When it comes to the business culture, Tianjin, Beijing, Alan. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, um, it's interesting that if you sure. look at uh, the Tianjin uh, sort of culture, you know, it, it, it has a great sense of humor, right? That was, you know, from a, uh, maybe because it's always been second fiddle to uh, Beijing. And so, you know, some of the top a comedian like Guo Degang are from uh, Tianjin, right? So the, they, they're the stand-up comic, Chinese stand-up comic. Um, I'll tell you, they're, they're, for a poor city, because it's so close to Beijing, so it's quite conservative. That's the only thing that I would uh, say is uh, very obvious, right? Or else it just would go, um, you know, full board, just like Shenzhen, right? Shenzhen is so far away that 
and also it's the status of the uh, the city that that they were able to uh, really, you know, I, I've heard this before uh, over and over again, and I've seen it is that Shenzhen uh, in Shenzhen they would go ahead and do something, uh, just do it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and and they'll they'll figure out something later in terms of you know if there were repercussions. So very bold in terms of. Right, Shenzhen is one of the few cities that has a a foreign currency fund, right, to fund foreign uh, uh, startups, right. That's very unusual, right. Meaning that there are a lot of sovereign funds, but that's at a different level. That's more at a, uh, you know, it, it, it's a higher level of play. But at the entrepreneur level, uh, startup level, uh, I think Shenzhen is the only one that's been active. So, overseas, not not in China. Uh, China, obviously, all over, all over. So, I would say for Tianjin, good. I mean, very solid in terms of just you know, if you look at you people, very, very hospitable uh, and good sense of humor. So, you know, I mean, that's good, right? Because you you kind of have to uh, go in and pitch your ideas and talk to them. Um, I mean, literally anywhere you go. Right, you want to deep dive a little bit more, you know. I mean, when you mentioned fundraising earlier, you can't uh, just stay in one, you know, like what uh, Fabian said earlier, right? Stay in one bubble and think that you're going to be able to raise money. It just doesn't happen, right? It's limited resources. So you want to increase and, uh, you know, the number of uh, people that uh, VCs that you meet locally, right? You want to have a Chinese. Uh, local to introduce you to those local VCs who might not speak English, right? And and you know and, and we think, oh my God, well, maybe all VCs who are overseas uh, educated, they're not, right? So they're probably yeah, out of the fourteen thousand of them that they are out there, how many ha- have we met? Right? I I met a lot, but but you just kind of get out there, right? Be uh, uh, take a look at Tianjin. I'm I'm a proponent of uh, looking at uh, opportunities. And Tianjin is definitely uh, in all these first tier, uh, new first tier cities are opportunities. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Alan, very much, guys. If you have um, more questions, I, I, I think um, any of us going to be easy and uh, happy to, to share more. Uh, reach out on probably on LinkedIn, the easiest way to connect. And uh, Anthony, thank you very much. I'm handing it over to you. Well, thank you, Mary. Thank yeah. you, Mary. Hello. Great. Great job. Yeah, thank you so much, um, our dear panel members. Um, Dwan is just drawing my attention to the fact that some of the panel members are really tired and we have to let them go. <laughs> so, and um, um, she's been prompting me all along sleep. that, hey, hey, <laughs> thanks so much for sticking around and for doing this for us, Fabian. I know it's been really last minute. I had to pull you from a lot of hard work and also like um, new stuff that you're taking on to take this. Thank you so much, Brian. You've been awesome, Alan. Thanks so much for the input. And our Marian, thanks so much also for coordinating the entire conversation. It's, it's been awesome. Um, there's something I, I want to say that, I mean, startups is not always about only tech, tech, tech companies. I think someone raised the questions like, okay, so apart from technology, uh, which other you know, industries are, are, pretty, are pretty good to, to get into? I think we need have time to get into that, but um, whoever asks a question can, can get in touch with me. I'll connect you to some of our panel members who can assist you with, with, with such a question. And for our audience, you guys rock. I mean, I love the way you stick around all from the beginning and, and until now. And, and I've never seen an awesome set of audience like you guys. Thanks so much. We really appreciate the good work. Um, we will keep the main group, um, the WeChat group will keep it alive uh, and working. Um, we just, you know, um, would share other interesting sub grind events in there. So if you're in there, you can just mute the group so it doesn't disturb you. Uh, but, you know, stay tuned. We'll share um, a lot more information. On that note, um, we'll bring the entire of today's conversation to an end. Thanks so much. Um, everyone, our speakers and our audience for sticking around. If you still want to hang around and chat a little bit, we're more than happy to, to have a little bit of discussions. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your evening. Anytime you see the Startup Grind logo, give us a salute. Have a good evening, all of you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much, everyone.